Okay, so you were really uncomfortable, you got your epidural, now you're feeling great. But let's not lose track of the bigger picture. We still want to have that vaginal delivery. And what are some of the best positions to be in? We're going to talk about that in this video. Hi guys, I'm Haley. I'm a labor and delivery nurse, childbirth educator, certified breastfeeding counselor, doula, and mom of two, soon to be three. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk about those positions, right? Because you're not going to just be flat on your back. And even if the anesthesiologist says he wants you in that to begin with, just to make sure because the epidural works with gravity and that it gets covers your whole body, you still have a lot of freedom to move around. So I'm going to invite my good friend Vicki here and fellow labor and delivery nurse to come help me and in, get into different positions. And when you have the epidural, you should always be able to move your legs and feet. It will kind of feel like when you've had a cavity filled where you can feel pressure and touch and like move, but you don't feel heat, cold, or pain sensations. What is that? This is a peanut. It is a peanut. It is a peanut. So the purpose of a peanut is to help open up your pelvis, give baby lots of room to come down because your legs were not closed when you got pregnant and they're not going to be closed when this baby comes out. So we want to think what is the best way that we can position you so that baby has the best chance of moving down, rotating, and coming out of the vagina instead of the C-section. Um, and one of those ways is to use the peanut here. So Vicki, show me how you would use a peanut with me if I was your patient. Well, the most basic way of using the peanut is simply just to place it between your legs. Uh huh. Okay. Get it to a point that's comfortable for you, so where you feel like you're stable. That's comfy. And take a nap. So Good this night. is a very basic, simple way to use it. So let's say now you're completely dilated, but we want that baby to move down a little bit more. Okay. We're going to switch this now, and we're going to put it at the lower half. Okay. To where your knees are closed, but your feet are open. Right. So you may think that this is counterintuitive since my knees are closed, and I just said you got to have your legs open to have the baby come out. But what this actually does is putting your knees together helps to open your femur bones, correct? and therefore open the posterior pelvis, giving baby more room to move down. This might be the point where you start to feel like, I might need to poop, and that's when you would tell your labor and delivery nurse, I'm feeling some pressure. And she'll probably check you and see where the baby is. It might be time to push and have a baby, right? Yep. What would be another way we could use the peanut or another position that we could get into with an epidural? Um, so another simple way, I'm going to have you straighten this bottom leg okay. here, and we're going to make this a 90 degree angle. Okay. Does that feel okay? Feels great. Are my pants see through? Because this could get awkward fast. Nope. Great. All right. <laughs> All right. So this is just going to change the diameter of the outlet mm -hmm. a little bit. Sometimes this helps babies line up that are in there just a little bit funky. So we're going to do this on both sides. Okay. We don't know. So literally the, the left side of my pelvis, I've... I've turned and brought back so that my pelvis is tilted more. And then I could bring this arm behind me and just have a nice little rest while the peanut and the baby and the uterus do all the work. And I get to just enjoy it. Hey. <laughs> okay. And then any other things with the peanut or are we moving on? Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. All right. So we're done with the peanut and then Obviously, um, if your legs are too heavy that you can't lift them or move them, you need to let your labor and delivery nurse know so that she can let the anesthesiologist know. You may need to turn down the epidural just a little bit, not enough to where you feel pain, but enough to where you're able to still move and feel that pressure. The epidural should never take away the sensation of pressure, okay? Because that's what we need you to feel so that you know where to push and when to push. Um, but back to our positions, what else would we get in? So with the help of your labor nurse, if she feels that it's appropriate and safe, we can do hands and knees hands again. Hands and knees, awesome. Maybe. All right. Yeah, we'll so go to bed. Hmm? We'll just, I won't go to bed. We'll just do it okay. on this. So you could even use the peanut here to lean on, or you can go down a little bit farther 
and have it be like knee chest, like <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, that feels glorious. And again, what this does is it helps to just engage baby, take that pressure off of your lower back. Um, and sometimes when things are moving rather quickly, um, your baby might have a little, their cord might get pushed against somewhere and a bunch of labor and delivery nurses might come in and say, hey, we just see on the monitor that your baby is requiring some of our attention. So we're going to put you in a position that baby is usually like and, and help help your baby breathe a little bit better. And so this is one of those that we can normally put you in and everything looks good and we can continue with a vaginal delivery plan. Okay. Um, and then you can also do with an epidural, pretty much any position that you can do in bed, you can do with an epidural. Um, the last one would be thrown position. So if you want to drop that down for me, I'll yeah, do this. Um, and a disclaimer that I will say about this throne position, it's called throne because you're a queen and you're sitting up like one. Um, what that does is it puts a lot of extra pressure on your cervix to dilate. So let's say maybe you're eight, nine centimeters and you've kind of been stuck there for a little while. If we put you up like this for like 20 or 30 minutes, no longer than that because it just leads to a swollen labia and possibly a swollen cervix. So we just want this position to kind of be short and sweet and see if that helps, okay? Um, but it's just like this, maybe you wanna eat a little snack before it's time to start pushing. This would be a good position to get into as well. So, um, any other positions? That's all I can think of, right? I got right now. Yeah. So that concludes your positions for when you have an epidural. Um, if you don't have an epidural, look, check out, and I forget which side it comes up on, but <laughs> my other video I did on laboring positions um, without an epidural. And then next up, we're going to talk about positions for pushing. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And remember, you got this.